dozens of skulls, skeletons, art celebrating death, war memorabilia, and several allegedly stolen items that Bonesmen uh, supposedly were supposed to take um, as gifts to the society's goddess. I am not making this up. <laughs> And uh, what happened to her? Well, according to Skull and Bones legend in 322 BC, which is why you see the number 322 associated with Bones, the Greek orator, orator Demosthenes died. When he died, the goddess Eulogia, whom Skull and Bones calls the goddess of eloquence, arose to the heavens and she didn't happen to come back down again until 1832 when Russell formed Skull and Bones. So now everything in the society is done in deference to this goddess. They have sacred anthems to her, they have a shrine to her, and they're supposedly um, encouraged to go steal things and bring them back to her in the tomb. Now I get it. <laughs> at, at, at Cornell, we just stole things for the hell of it. Uh, Alexander Robbins, author of Secrets of the Tomb. Many thanks. started spreading, Christian leaders recognized Mary's appeal for potential converts among the pagans. If you go back and you read the prayers to the goddesses and the shrines of the goddesses and the rituals of the goddesses, they were beautiful and they had to do with healing and with salvation and with comfort in all kinds of ways. And so what the bishops did, and this was done with approval, was that, as they said, baptize all of that and bring it within the parameters of the Christian message. And so the titles, the shrines, the iconography of the goddess got transferred to the feminine figure in the Christian tradition connected with Jesus at his birth, namely his mother.
Some of the most striking similarities can be found in religious icons, such as Isis, the mother goddess, and her son, Horus. In the Christian church, we have the Christ child who sits on the lap of his mother, the Virgin Mary. And uh, there are many of us who maintain that the Christ child on the lap of the Virgin Mary is the visual appropriation by the Christians of this very venerable icon of ancient Egypt. The pronounced resemblance may reflect a political challenge that faced the early Christian church to wean potential converts from their reverence for Isis. Isis was really the supreme savior goddess of the ancient Mediterranean world and had her cult as far as York and England and probably early Christianity found Isis to be one of the most difficult obstacles to the popularity of Christianity because people were devoted to this loving mother goddess. Honoring the Blessed Mother in the way that we should. Now she's not God. We do not worship Mary. We do not. That would be heretical and improper. We love her. We pay respect to her. We have a special veneration for her. We worship God alone. That's a totally distinct and separate thing. The Blessed Mother we respect. Why? She's the Mother of the Lord. How about her? For a star. And she's our spiritual mother. So, when you have a problem, go to Mary. She'll take you to Jesus. Your water will be turned into wine. You'll be given the gift of the Holy Spirit, that gift who contains all gifts, and you can handle anything that comes along. The Holy Father made a pilgrimage to Fatima to thank Our Lady for her divine protection and to consecrate once more the peoples and nations of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We do not worship Mary. We do not. That would be heretical and improper. We do not worship Mary. We do not. That would be heretical and improper. We do not worship Mary. We do not. That would be heretical and improper.